been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off, you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Catherine Joy Foster. And the theme of our program today is the Tsunami of Blessings Inside and Out. And this is part 114. Now, Abba Father uniquely prearranged Jesus' step through Holy Spirit to be his personal ambassador in the earth for you, just as he did in every account in the Holy Bible, the New Testament and Old Testament. Still today, Jesus seeks to save you to the uttermost. That means all things in your life are whole and well. Our precious Heavenly Father has never changed his mind about you as the treasure of his heart. To him, you are the pearl of great price he purchased after he found you. Now learn to discover him so that he can give you what he always desired you to own and to occupy on earth. God has an open door policy. Now just go through the open door he has set before you. We are going to begin with the first point today and that is seek to rest. Jesus teaching in Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 25th through the 34th verses from the King James Version says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than the meat? Yes, because now we can share the life that Jesus came to give us when we believe. And the body more than raiment? Yes, because we are a habitation of God through Holy Spirit where Jesus Christ lives in our heart. And he goes on to say, Behold, the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, neither they gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Yes, because we were made in Jesus, Holy Spirit, and God's image and likeness and now we are recreated in christ when we are saved which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his statue no one why take ye thought for raiment consider the lilies of the field how they grow they toil not neither do they spin and yet i say unto you that even solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And while Solomon had favor, he was still labor intensive. When you look at the lily, the lily knows how to perfectly receive its provision from God. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O little faith? Yes, because he wants to clothe us with all that he is and all that he has and that we would be wearing the glory of God. So therefore, he will also take care of what we need to wear as well as an ambassador. Therefore, take no thought saying what you should eat or what shall you drink or with what you should be clothed. For if all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your father knoweth that you have need of all these things. He is all-knowing, 
all caring, all powerful, and all present. Jesus goes on to say, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What he's saying is in the kingdom of God is the king. It is provision, protection, preservation, promotion in the kingdom of God and seek his righteousness, which means that you are learning how to believe right about everything, about yourself, about God, about others, about your enemies, about even Satan, so that you're not getting trapped behind what you believe if it could be a lie. And then he says that all these things will be added to you. That means what you're wearing, what you're eating, where you're living, the provision, because it will come from our Father. Then Jesus ends with, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto day is the evil thereof. He says, be certain to be attentive to what God has provided in that day so that you can stay safe and sound from any enemy attack. Now, when we look at that word seek, it means to search for, desire, require, demand. That demand means you're not demanding, but you understand you have a covenant. You have a eternal covenant that's ordered in all things and sure. All your desire, all your salvation, and God will cause it to spring forth. You want to learn how to seek to rest. In Matthew the 11th chapter, the 28th through the 30th verses from the message translation, and this is Jesus saying, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion, come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly that is seek to rest also let's look in luke the 11th chapter the first through the 13th verse from the king james version it says and it came to pass that as jesus was praying in a certain place when he seized one of his disciples said to him lord teach us to pray as john also taught his disciples and now you could see that Jesus is a credible witness again and still. So his disciples want to be able to do what he did because they could see the results that he received. Jesus sought God and every time he received rest. And Jesus said unto them, when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, how would be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And Jesus said to them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, Lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is come to me in his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he that is within shall say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut. And my children are with me in bed, and I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto thee, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needed why because the one who is in need is so persistent he refuses to go away and remains shameless about staying there 
even if it is at midnight. And Jesus says, and I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. If a son shall ask a bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will for a fish he give him a serpent? Or if he asks an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give a Holy Spirit to them who ask him? So what Jesus is doing is introducing Holy Spirit as the one who will help us make all the transitions, transactions, transference in the earth. For Holy Spirit is the one who will guide us in all truth, show us things to come, remind us of the words that Jesus said, and he will make sure that you can call Abba, Abba, and feel comfortable, for he is our comforter. In James, the first chapter, the 17th verse from the King James Version says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, that's the glory light, with whom is no variableness, he doesn't change his mind about you, nor shadow of turning. And then let's also look at other scriptures that show that God has the heart of compassion to want to help you more than maybe you want to even be helped. In Romans, the eighth chapter, the 32nd verse from the King James Version says, he spared not his own son, that's God, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He would not withhold anything from you. Let's move on. What was our greatest need? We can find that in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that everlasting life begins now, even in the earth. And then in Proverbs, the 17th chapter, the 8th verse from the King James Verse is a gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it. Now I'm going to say him because we're talking the precious gift we have as the Holy Spirit. Whithsoever he turneth, it prospers. Why? Because Holy Spirit is the mind of Christ so that we will be on the same page that God wants us to be on. What message will we like to leave with you today? By Jesus' biblical instruction, inspiration, innovation, you behold the kingdom of God through the lens of Holy Spirit even now. There are secrets to discover in the presence of the King of glory that reside only in the kingdom of God. First, you can seek and receive something you have never had before. Secondly, you can seek and rescue something that's been lost or stolen. And thirdly, you can seek and recover something that requires resuscitation. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. Please stay tuned for the entire program today. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministry is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are, to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216 486 8615 extension 1 again that's area code 216-486-8615 extension 1 proud to be an advertiser for king's portion web radio 
welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the Tsunami Blessing Inside and Out by Jesus' Biblical Instruction, Inspiration, Innovation. You behold the kingdom of God through the lens of Holy Spirit even now. There are secrets to discover in the presence of the King of Glory that only reside in the kingdom of God. First, you can seek and receive something you have never had before. Number two, you can seek and rescue something that's been lost or stolen. Thirdly, you can seek and recover something that requires resuscitation. Now we are going to discuss seek to reproduce in John, the fifth chapter, the 30th verse from the Amplified Version, the Classic Edition. This is Jesus personal testimony. He says, I am able to do nothing for myself independently of my own accord, but only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders, even as I hear, I judge. I decide as I'm bidden to decide as a voice comes to me. So I give a decision and my judgment is right, just righteous because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. Jesus understands living sanctified to God. He also understands how to live separated from the world system. In John, the 14th chapter, the 30th and the 31st verses from the Amplified Version, the classic edition reads, I will not talk to you much more. This is Jesus. For the prince of this world is coming and he has no claim on me. Satan has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him and he has no power over me. But Satan is coming and I do as the father has commanded me so that the world may know, be convinced that I love the Father and that I only do what the Father has instructed me to do. I act in full agreement with his orders. Now, let's look at the temptation that Jesus faced in the wilderness. In Luke, the fourth chapter, the first through the 15th, verses from the King James Version, it says, and Jesus being full of Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. That word full is really important because we want to make sure that we live in the fullness of the glory of God. So then all the overflow, what we produce goes into the world we are to bring Jesus into. And it goes on to say, and Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Remember that the Holy Spirit remained on Jesus because Jesus never quenched, never grieved, or vexed Holy Spirit at all. Now, being 40 days tempted of the devil, in those days, Jesus did not eat at all, nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered because he lived in this body as we do in the earth. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Satan was going after Jesus craving an appetite. And this would be considered the lust of the flesh. And Jesus answered Satan saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. This is the power of the Logos word that we need to know what God is saying about us in the areas of our life that we'll need 
the protection and provision because they are the sworn promises of God to us that it is impossible for him to lie. And the devil taken Jesus up to a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto Jesus, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Now here is Satan trying to show Jesus that he was Jesus idol and that he could just hand deliver him not knowing at that time that Jesus came to die. So therefore it was a temptation to Jesus because now Satan was using the lust of the eyes to get a response from Jesus. But Jesus answered and said unto Satan, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Jesus was committed to God only. He was sanctified to God and he therefore remained separated from Satan and anything that he wanted to give him. Then Satan brought Jesus to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He'll give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now here is Satan trying to use presumption with Jesus. And this is an area of the pride of life. He was trying to get Jesus to commit suicide. And Jesus answering said unto him, it is said. Now Jesus is using the rhema word from God against the written word that Satan was trying to use as temptation. And Jesus goes on to say, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from Jesus for a season. What happened that Satan did not have any other angle to use. Jesus was fighting where there was no competition. So he was able to outlast the temptation because he outclassed the contradiction because he yielded himself fully to Holy Spirit, the word of God and Abba. And Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee and that's the dunamis power. So he went into the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit and he came out of the wilderness full of Dudamit's power and there went out of fame of him through all the region round about and he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. So you can see very clearly here that here is Jesus reproducing what God wanted him to do in the wilderness and from that God gave him promotion. Let's look at another event where we're talking about seek to reproduce. In John, the second chapter, the first through the seventh verses from the King James Version it says, and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, that means that they did not have enough. They were about to run out. The mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. And Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. 
Now, what Jesus was doing with his mother was giving her the trial of her faith. And this is what Jesus was listening to as his mother made a demand on heaven to get this wine. And his mother said to the servants, whatever Jesus saith unto you, do it. And there were six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim. And Jesus said to them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was now made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, every man at the beginning that set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou have kept the good wine until now. And this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. What we're looking at is it could take up to 30 years for the best wine. And therefore, this was a delivery of wine just in time. Mary was determined that she was not going home without that delivery because she knew that God could provide and would provide. Now let's also look in Mark, the sixth chapter, the 31st through the 46th verse from the King James Version. And Jesus said to them, come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into the desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing and they knew him and ran afoot hither out of all cities and out went them and came together unto him. They are seeking Jesus and they're craving after him. They are making demand on him. They are requiring him. They are desiring him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, this is a desert place and now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and to the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. Jesus answered and said unto them, give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? Jesus answered unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say, Five and two fishes. And Jesus commanded them to make them all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when Jesus had taken the five loaves, and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among all them. And they did all eat and were filled. 
and they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. Let's look at this. This was a little boy's lunch. So therefore, it wasn't like five loaves of Wonder Bread and two large catfish. These were more like tuna fish crackers for a young boy to eat. And also, it was more than 5,000 men because there were women and children beside. So it could be up to 20,000 people or more in that crowd. But what made all the difference was the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and add no sorrow with it because it doesn't increase any toiling because he was able to reproduce heaven on earth. And it says, and straightway, Jesus constrained to his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, where he sent away the people. And when he sent them away, he departed unto a mountain to pray. Now on our program today, you're going to enjoy the music of Corey Miles as he sings all of the glory because anytime we're seeking God in any way, it is because he is the glory and the lifter of our head and he sees us having the glory that he gave to us as well as it could be seen around us. So anything that was lacking, missing or broken, he wants to supply because it is already a finished work that Jesus supplied for us and is covered under our everlasting covenant with God. That he will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. Christ Jesus give us desires of his heart in ours as well as do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. All of the glory. Corey Miles.
give you the honor for you have done great things nobody else is worthy visit us on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com that's blog.kingsportionlive.com Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out by Jesus. Biblical instruction, innovation, inspiration. You behold the kingdom of God through the lens of Holy Spirit. Even now, there are secrets to discover in the presence of the King of glory that only reside in the kingdom of God. First, you can seek and receive something you have never had before. Secondly, you can seek and rescue something that's been lost or stolen. And thirdly, you can seek and recover something that requires resuscitation. Now we are going to look at seek to rescue. In Luke, the 10th chapter, the 30th through the 35th verses from the Passion Translation. This is Jesus replying, listen, I tell you, there was once a Jewish man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. When bandits robbed him along the way, they beat him severely, stripped him naked, and left him half dead. Soon a Jewish priest walking down the same street came upon the wounded man. Seeing him from a distance, the priest crossed to the other side of the road and walked right past him, not turning to help him one bit. Later, a religious man, a Levite, came walking down the same street and likewise crossed to the other side to pass by the wounded man without stopping to help him. Finally, another man, a Samaritan, came upon the bleeding man and was moved with tender compassion for him. He stooped down and gave him first aid, pouring olive oil on his wounds, disaffecting them with wine and bandaging them to stop the bleeding. Lifting him up, he placed him on his own donkey and brought him to an inn. Then he took him from his donkey and carried him to a room for the night. The next morning, he took his own money from his wallet and gave it to the innkeeper with these words, take care of him until I come back from my journey. If it costs more than this, I will repay you when I return. Now this is the Jews and the Samaritans having this racial hatred for one another. And now Jesus is showing that he is indeed the good Samaritan. He is the one that stoops down to touch us, to heal us, to lift us up, to carry us on our journey and pay our debts and he promises to return and reward those who do his will. That is remuneration. Let's also look in John, the fourth chapter, the first through the 42nd verses from the Passion Translation. And as soon the news reached the Jewish religious leaders, known as the Pharisees, that Jesus was drawing greater crowds of followers coming to be baptized in John. Although Jesus didn't baptize, but had his disciples baptize the people Jesus heard was being said and abruptly left Judea and returned to the province of Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaritan territory. Now listen to this. 
Jesus teaches us that whenever there's rejection to shake it off and keep moving so that it won't trap us in any way. He made sure that since he was abruptly moving, that he would stay in a position where he would be effective in ministry and not be entangled in any strife. Jesus arrived at the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph long ago. Wearied by his long journey, he sat on the edge of Jacob's well. He sent his disciples into the village to buy food for it was already afternoon because now he's staging a position where he can talk to the Samaritan woman without any interruptions. The soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, give me a drink of water. Surprised, she said, why would a Jewish man ask a Samaritan woman for a drink of water? Jesus replied, if you only knew who I am and the gift that God wants to give you, you'd ask me for a drink and I would give you living water. The woman replied, but sir, you don't even have a bucket and this well is very deep. So where do you find this living water? Do you really think that you are greater than our ancestor Jacob who dug this well and drank from it himself along with his children and livestock? Jesus answered, if you drink from Jacob's well, you'll be thirsty again and again. But if anyone drinks the living water, I give them they shall never thirst again and will be forever satisfied. And when you drink the water I give you, it becomes a gushing fountain of Holy Spirit springing up and flooding you with endless life. The woman replied, let me drink that water then I'll never be thirsty again and I won't have to come back here to draw water. Jesus said, Go get your husband and bring him back here. But I'm not married, the woman answered. That's true, Jesus said. For you've been married five times and now you're living with a man who is not your husband. You told the truth. You see, she was thirsting for something that flesh and blood could not give her. So she kept trying. She was seeking, but seeking the wrong answers from the wrong people and the woman said you must be a prophet so tell me this why do our fathers worship here on this nearby mountain but your people teach that Jerusalem is the place where we must worship which is right Jesus responded believe me dear woman the time has come when you won't worship the father on a mountain or in Jerusalem but in your heart your people don't really know the one they worship. We Jews worship out of our experience for it's from the Jews that salvation is made possible. From here on, worshiping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart. For God is a spirit and he longs to have sincere worshipers who worship and adore him in the realm of the spirit and in truth. The woman said, this is all so confusing, but I do know that the anointed one is coming, the true Messiah. And when he comes, he will tell us everything we need to know. Jesus said to her, you don't have to wait any longer. The anointed one is here speaking with you. I am the one you are looking for. And at that moment, the disciples returned and were stunned to see Jesus talking with the Samaritan woman. Yet none of them dared to ask him why or what they were discussing. For Jesus gave the Samaritan woman ample space so that she could receive 
apple grace. And this is all at once. The woman dropped her water jar and ran off to tell the villagers what was told to her. Why? Because she dropped that water pot because she wasn't thirsty anymore. She had been filled. Come and meet a man at the well who told me everything I've ever done. That's what she said. He could be the anointed one we've been waiting for. Now she was certain, but she was giving them an opportunity to believe for themselves. Hearing this, the people came streaming out of the village to go to see Jesus. She had been going to this well at the hottest part of day because she knew she had a bad reputation and people in town were talking about her and probably in front of her face. So she was going to avoid anybody else. And for what God did in her heart that day, for them to come streaming out of the village to see Jesus, they could see the glory of God on her. And then it says, then the disciple began to insist that Jesus eat some of the food they brought back from the village saying, teacher, you must eat something. But Jesus said, don't worry about me. I have eaten a meal you don't know about. Puzzled by this, his disciples began to discuss among them, did someone already bring him food? Where did he get this meal? Then Jesus spoke up and said, my food is to be doing the will of him who sent me and bring it to completion. As the crowds emerged from the village, Jesus said to his disciples, why would you say the harvest is another four months away? Look at all the people coming. Now is harvest time for their hearts are like vast fields of ripened grain ready for a spiritual harvest and everyone who reaps these souls for eternal life will receive a reward and those who plant spiritual seeds and those who reap the harvest will celebrate together with great joy and this confirms the saying, one sows the seed and another one reaps the harvest. I have sent you out to harvest a field that you hadn't planted, where many others have labored long and hard before you. And now your privilege to profit from their labors and reap the harvest. So there were so many from the Samaritan village who became believers in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. And then they begged Jesus to stay with them. So he stayed there for two days, resulting in many more coming to faith in him because of his teachings. Jesus is irresistible. Then the Samaritan said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you told us, but now we've heard him ourselves and are convinced that he really is the true savior of the world. What happens when we believe we share the life that Jesus came to share with us. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. I was just standing there basking in the sun and all of a sudden I was soaking wet. There wasn't a sign in the sky, so I was unprepared without an umbrella. But in the end, it just didn't matter. I loved every minute of it. I knew I was living under open heavens. It really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing. Not a dry spot. This is Fran the Fan of H-D-O-R. Uh-oh, here comes the rain again. been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the Tsunami Blessing Inside and Out by Jesus 
biblical instruction, inspiration, and innovation, you behold the kingdom of God through the lens of a Holy Spirit, even now there are secrets to discover in the presence of the King of Glory that only reside in the kingdom of God. First, you can seek and receive something you have never had before. Secondly, you can seek and rescue something that's been lost or stolen. And thirdly, you can seek and recover something that requires resuscitation. Now we are going to address, seek to rejoice. Looking at Luke, the 15th chapter from the King James Version, it says, Then drew near unto Jesus all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And Jesus spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you have a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance either. What woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she has found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the piece that I had lost likewise. I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And Jesus said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And the father divideth unto them, both of the sons, his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, and took his journey into a far country, and having wasted his substance there with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. He had things missing, lacking, and broken. And he joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare and i perish with hunger I will rise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. You see, he couldn't even say the last portion that he was going to say because he was full of shame. And his father stopped him right there so that he could receive the glory of the father. But the father said unto his servants, bring forth the best robe 
and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. He covered his son's shame and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now, his elder son was in the field because his elder son was acting like a servant and not a son who had his inheritance. And he came and drew near to the house and he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants. Now he could go in, but he wanted to know what was happening from the outside. And he asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is coming. Thy father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. You see, that's showing the father's heart that whatever state the sons were in, he came to them because he wanted them to understand that this was a rejection-free zone. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet, Thou gavest me no kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which have devoured thy living with harlots, and thou have killed for him the fatted calf. But the father said unto the son, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. You see the oldest son actually being the firstborn had the blessing of the firstborn who had received the double portion. He just didn't know what he had and the younger one didn't know what he lost. But this is the father's heart to let you know that you're in a state where you can always come to him. And he goes on to say to the older son, it was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this, thy brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So we could see resuscitation coming right here. We could see rescue coming right here. We can also see receiving coming right here and when we think of joy it is a triumph and glorious state that doesn't change and that's what happens in the heart of God and we want to rejoice at the things that he rejoices at and to him that's what he always wanted what Jesus gave him and now we need to join in with Jesus so we can help the father in his mission to win the world that he already paid for. Now again on our program today, we're going to have the music from our radio station, the Heaven Drench online radio station. In that, we have the music of Marilyn Wright. And her song says, Give me a clean heart. For in God giving us a clean heart, it is a heart just like his. It's a heart that's pure. It's a heart that's perfect. It's a heart that worships him because we begin to see him as he really is. That he is a spirit and we're worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Because we are indeed the pearl of great price. And so you can see in Matthew, the 13th chapter, the 45th and the 46th verse from the Passion Translation says, 
heaven's kingdom realm is also like a jewel merchant in search of rare pearls. And when he discovered one very precious and exquisite pearl, he immediately gave up all he had in exchange for it. Now this is Jesus teaching and he's referring to the merchant as himself and we are the ones, you are the ones, I am the one who is now the exquisite and unique pearl as his beloved follower that came from his wounded side, the wounded side of Jesus. And so Jesus was so prompted to give it all up, including his sacred blood in exchange for having you as his own. Now let's hear, give me a clean heart. For after that, you want to make sure that you give Jesus all Marilyn right. And I'll be right back.
welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the Tsunami Blessing Inside and Out by Jesus. Biblical instruction, innovation, and inspiration. You behold the kingdom of God through the lens of Holy Spirit. Even now, there are secrets to discover in the presence of the King of Glory that only reside in the kingdom of God. First, you can seek and receive something you've never had before. Secondly, you can seek and rescue something lost or stolen. Thirdly, you can seek and recover something that requires resuscitation. Now we are going to discuss seek to be released. In Luke, the 19th chapter, the first through the 10th verses from the King James Version says, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was a chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up. And saw Zacchaeus and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, all murmured, saying that Jesus was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord. The half of my goods I give to the poor. And I've taken anything by false accusation. I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said to him, This day is salvation come to your house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And then in Mark, the 10th chapter, the 45th through the 52nd verses from the King James Version, it says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And they came to Jericho. And as Jesus went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should not speak, but to hold his peace. But he cried out more a great deal. The son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. Now, before they just wanted him to be quiet, but now when Jesus gets involved, they try to act like they're cooperating with Jesus. You have to know when you want something that someone else doesn't have and you know that God has and Jesus has, the Holy Spirit has it, keep moving forward for go ahead and seek to be released. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus and Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And whole means there's nothing missing, lacking, or broken. So when Bartimaeus threw his garment away that recognized him as an official beggar. That means he was saying at that point, by faith, I will not have to beg anymore. And that was what made him whole. And immediately he received his sight 
and follow Jesus in the way. Let's also look in Luke, the 8th chapter, the 40th through the 56th verse from the King James Version. It, said, it came to pass, and when Jesus was returned, the people greatly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Jesus is irresistible. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come to his house. For he only had one daughter, about 12 years old, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. This is Jesus. And a woman having a issue of blood lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed anymore, came behind Jesus and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stanched. I mean, it stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and all they that were with him, master, the multitude thrung thee and pressed thee, and thou sayest, who touched me? And Jesus said, someone has touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. That means when the virtue went out of Jesus, which is the miraculous power of Jesus, she received her healing, which was physically and probably even spiritually the cure that she needed that moment. And Jesus said to her, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Now let's look at that word a whole. That word a whole in Greek means saved, healed, preserved, rescued, delivered, protected. And that's what our faith can receive. And that's what her faith received. And then he goes on to say, go in peace. That means shalom. And in this case, it goes into prosperity because she had spent everything she had and didn't get any better, but got worse. So therefore she was whole because her faith in Jesus gave her perfect soundness. Well, yet he was speaking. There cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, fear not, only believe and she shall be made whole. That again is saved, healed, preserved, rescued, delivered, protected. And when Jesus came to the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But Jesus said, weep not, for she is not dead, but sleepeth. See, because everything lives to God. So Jesus has God's perception on everything. And they laughed Jesus to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And Jesus put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. He says, awake, be aroused. And her spirit came again. It returned her. She was resuscitated. And she arose straightway and he commanded to give her meat. Why? Because if she had really been a spirit, she would not have been able to eat anything at all. So you see here that there was a seeking to be released. 
So just like Jesus has sought you, you can also seek him. And with the seeking, there will be the meeting. But you may be saying that you don't have a relationship with God. Well, now is the time for you to do that. Why don't you say this prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I recognize that I need to be saved. And you are the only Savior of the world. And you shed the only blood that's recognized in heaven for me. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Be the Savior of my life. I accept your sacrifice, the sacrifice that God has accepted on my behalf. Now, I thank you for my new birth and my salvation. And I thank you and that the healing that was released to all the people in the scripture is still available to me today. So now I receive my healing. I receive my provision. I receive my deliverance. I receive my preservation. I receive my protection for my life has been redeemed from destruction and you have redeemed me. And now I am a credible witness that I have been released. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Now, I believe that you applying your faith to these scriptures, you receive everything that Jesus paid for. And why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlive.com. That's info at kingsportionlive.com. And we'll send you some encouragement along the way. Now let's return the remaining portions of Kings Portion Live after this message from our sponsor. We invite you to visit our new interactive website. Please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org. That's www.kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of our program today, which bears the theme Tsunami Blessing Inside and Out by Jesus Biblical Instruction Innovation and inspiration, you behold the kingdom of God through the lens of Holy Spirit. Even now, there are secrets to discover in the presence of the King of glory that only reside in the kingdom of God. First, you can seek and receive something you have never had before. Secondly, you can seek and rescue something that was lost or stolen. And thirdly, you can seek and recover something that requires resuscitation. Now, this portion we are going to talk about seek to receive. Taken from Luke, the fourth chapter, the 17th through the 44th verses from the King James Version. It says, And there was delivered unto Jesus the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, and this is in Isaiah 61. And Jesus says here in Luke, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And Jesus closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. History shows that where Jesus was set down was in the Moses chair, which was meant for the high priest. Well, in the earth, Jesus is the high priest of our profession under the kingdom of God rule. He sat where God told him to sit. And all the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And Jesus began to say to them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. What he said, it is fully loaded 
totally equipped, it's crammed, it is complete, it is finished. And what Jesus did was to remove the time restraints that would be on Jubilee. They wouldn't have to wait another 50 years for things to happen because now it could be any time at all. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? And Jesus said unto them, ye will surely say unto me this proverb, physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Why? Because they had rejected Jesus as God's son and they can only see him as Joseph son and so therefore because of their unbelief he could do no great miracles even there and Jesus goes on to say to them in verse 25 but I tell you of a truth many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land but unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them were cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian, and all who were in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust Jesus out of the city and led him into the brow of the hill wherein their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. They were trying to kill Jesus. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way because he had sanctified himself unto God and God was able to heal him, redeem him even in the earth and save him to the uttermost because of Jesus' continual worship. But passing through the midst of them, he went his way. This is Jesus and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee and taught them on the Sabbath day. And they were astonished at his doctrine for his word, which is a Logos word, was with power, which is authority, which is exousia in Greek. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of unclean devil and cried out, with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace. Now, in this case, it was not shalom, it was muscle. Shut up and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him, but hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying, what a word is this? So this is the Logos word again. He says, for with authority, and this is exousia and power, which is dunamis, Jesus commanded the unclean spirits and they came out. It was impossible for them to disobey his word. Because God had given Jesus the highest name. For God has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name that's above every other name. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. So even though the 
enemy saw him who he was they were really worshiping him and they were pleading with him because they wanted their full expression and they know that the only way they could have it is if he gave it to them but satan is not welcome whatsoever he's defeated and we don't want nothing in him just like jesus lived he showed us the way and it says and the fame of jesus went out into every place of the country round about and he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. And they besought him for her. And Jesus stood over her and rebuked the fever. And it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting all they that had been sick with diverse diseases brought them unto Jesus and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them and devils also came out of many crying out and saying thou art Christ the son of God and he rebuking them suffered them not to speak for they knew that he was Christ and when it was day he departed and went into a desert place and the people sought him. And this word here is they craved him. There was a hunger and thirst after righteousness that only Jesus could feel. And they stayed him, which means they detained him that he should not depart from them. Jesus is irresistible. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. He was set apart. He was sent out by God as his ambassador, as he was to them, so he is to us, even today. How would we like to leave this program today with you? Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Foremost on his agenda is each inhabitant of the earth, each person, each individual. However, it is inclusive of property and possessions as well. You see, the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God never leaves you missing or lacking anything. The Lord always honors his sworn everlasting blood covenant with you to return safely anything that was surrendered to defeat voluntarily or involuntarily remember there is always room in his heart you can come and seek to rest seek to reproduce seek to rescue seek to rejoice seek to be released and seek to receive. This is Captain Joy Foster for King's Portion, where we speak to the royal blood in you. You have been listening to the King's Portion with radio host Catherine Joy Foster. Today's podcast is available for download. Log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.